Welcome to this evening's Compline Service from St John's in Egham. Today is Tuesday the 11th of May and I, my name is Simon Fraser and I'm one of the Associate Ministers of the Church. Shall we just spend a few moments in quietness, preparing our hearts for this short service? The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We now come to our time of confession together. And shall we just spend a few moments thinking about the day that we've had? Hopefully there'll be things that we can praise God for. But there may be things that we might regret where we haven't been at our best. A few moments of silence now to reflect on the day now past, before we come to our time of confession together. And we say our confession together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, Grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be forever. We now come to our Compline hymn, which we say together. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you would steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. We now continue our journey through Matthew's Gospel, and tonight we're looking at Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their flatteries and the, with the wide and the tassels of their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted in the marketplaces and they have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you only have one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is, is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now this is the last week of Jesus' ministry. He is teaching in the temple courts and it is reckoned that this would have been Tuesday, 
just three days before going to the cross on the Friday. And Jesus is talking to the crowds and, and his disciples about the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. He's telling them that they must obey the religious authorities to do what they are told. But not to do what they uh, to do what they tell you, but not to do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. He goes on to say, they tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, and they but they themselves will, will not be willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. And we have this comment comment from Jesus. They make their phylacteries wide and their tussles on their garments long. Now the phylacteries, an orthodox Jew would carry one or two small leather cube shaped boxes containing portions of scripture, particularly at morning prayer, and they were called phylacteries. What Jesus was saying was that they were making a particular show of the scriptures they had. It was a status thing. And it was all about their status and showing off and making out how important they were. In short, Jesus was calling the teachers of the law and the Pharisees hypocrites. Others might have thought this, but they had kept quiet. But Jesus just came out and said it. I once read a book called How to Win Friends and, Inf and Influence People. And I can tell you that there was nowhere in that book where it advocated calling other people hypocrites. Now I don't know about you, but I've never met anyone who was happy to be called a hypocrite. And yet, if we're really honest with ourselves, there is a tendency in all of us to be hypocrites. I'm thinking about the urge sometimes to exaggerate a bit, just to impress others. Now, I'm not saying that we're in the same class or in the same league as the teachers of the law and the Pharisees in our passage. But it's an easy thing to slip into. And I would imagine that the more important you think you are, the more offended you would be about being called a hypocrite. For Jesus had just three days left and the tension was rising. And then Jesus gives the crowd some good advice. He says, this is what they're like, but this is how I want you to be. And he goes on to say, but you are not to be called rabbi. For you only have one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The greatest among you will be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus came to serve and not to be served. Now, the Apostle Paul gives us a lesson in humility in Philippians. He said this, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It is certainly worth spending some time reflecting on this passage and how it affects our lives and the lives of those around us. Amen. We now come to our expressions of faith together, which we say together. Lord, you've always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. 
Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today I believe. And finally, Lord, you have always spoken when time was right. And though you be silent now, today I believe. Save us, O Lord, while waking. And guard us while sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and the sleep may rest in peace. We now come to our time of prayer. Shall we pray together? Our Father God, we, as we think of the example that Jesus gave us and the way he lived his life, help us to examine ourselves and our motives in the things we do and how we interact with others. Would you expose any areas in our lives that we need to address? Help us, we pray, to have humble hearts and a willingness to have compassion for others. Shall we just pause for a few moments to bring our own private prayers for those that we love and care for? Amen to our private prayers. Our Father God, we thank you for the progress that has been made in getting COVID under control. But help us to be wise as the restrictions begin to be lifted. And that we may bring before you and bring before us other countries where the virus is still out of control. And may we play our part as a nation in helping other nations through this pandemic. Father, we pray for the sick and the bereaved, the lonely and those going through difficult times and hardships at this time. Our Father God, we thank you that in times of struggle and hardship that we can turn to you. Increase our faith, Lord, even when things look bleak and difficult. Father, we thank you that we are part of your global family, that you have made us stewards of your creation. Give us wisdom and compassion, we pray, in, in how we live our lives, in a world where there is so much need. Help us to love and care and support each other. And help us to love you more, to love each other more and to love our community more. Amen. And now let us pray for our daily bread as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray. And drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service is drawing to a close. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, us, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I am placing my soul and my body in thy safekeeping this night, O God. In thy safekeeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safekeeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause, be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this night and in all the days ahead. Amen. It just remains for me to say good night and God bless.